Well, it looks like my bolts are a little bit too short and I can't fit this extra washer in there. So I want to use a size bolt. I believe this is a 3 8 bolt. Um, I just don't have any longer ones right now. So next time I go into town, I'll pick up some bolts that are a little bit longer and I'll get a little bit of more, a little bit more space for this extra washer. Maybe put a lock washer on it also. I made the framework ahead of time. There was a couple different ways that I could attach this structure to the ground. The easiest way, because I wanted to pour a pad of concrete, the easiest way I could do that was to make a framework bolted to this when I welded it together, make that framework, take it off, sink it in the concrete, and let it cure that way. Another way I could have done it, I could have just made a bracket that would bolt onto the ends and then use what they call redheads. You drill a hole in the concrete, use a little redhead bolt, you pound it down in there, and then you, you tighten a, a bolt or a nut on the top of it, and that would have held the structure to the concrete. And you could drive, say, T-posts into the ground right next to the feet and strap or bolt these feet to the T-posts in the ground. If you want to drive eight foot T-posts, seven foot in the ground, that's probably going to hold it pretty good. What are you doing, pup? Huh? Be good dog. Go protect them chickens. So I made the framework. I had it all bolted up when I welded it together to make sure it was gonna line up. This should drop right into place over there. Pop that bolt in and it'll, it'll make it nice and solid. Um, the concrete is four to four and a half inches thick, four, foot, uh, four and a half foot by four and a half foot pad. I believe 13 bags, 13 80 pound bags of concrete are in this pour right here. So what is that? A thousand, thousand twenty pounds in this concrete to hold this thing on the ground. I packed this dirt down the best I could with my backhoe. I had to dig up an oak tree that was right here because this is where I wanted the cell tower and the oak tree was spreading out. I had to put the, the tower down there a ways. And I didn't, I didn't want it that far away. I wanted it kind of closer. So I did have to dig up an oak tree, roots and all, right here. Um, pack the dirt down the best I could as I was backfilling it. Hopefully it doesn't go anywhere. It shouldn't go anywhere. I did remember right before I poured that I wanted to put a piece of conduit in the ground to run my coax through over to the house so I don't have this coax kind of stringing up to my eave looks kind of hokey to me, so I just didn't want to do it that way. Put the piece of coax in the ground right before I poured. I haven't glued this connection in because I don't want it to get in the way of any of these bars as I'm tilting it up. And my ground rod right here. This piece of rebar, it's got to be five foot in the ground, and I must have hit a really big rock because it wouldn't go any further. So I just cut off the top, and I think I had another foot that I wanted to go down on the ground. And I'll just connect that up with a nice piece of four inch copper wire, four inch, number four copper wire, and I'll secure that somewhere to the framework so that it grounds the framework to the ground. Building this wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be. I kinda did it a simple way. I didn't use a lot of big mathematical equations to get the lengths of these bars so it would look straight. I say look straight because it's not perfectly straight. It would be a lot straighter, pretty close to eyeball straight if I would have had a chance to build it on a concrete floor like a, a garage floor or a shop floor but even building on uneven gravel over there it turned out pretty straight if you sight down the very top of it you can see a little bit of a whoop when you get I think at two-thirds of the way up it's got a little bit of a whoop in, in one of the bars not a big deal it's still gonna be super strong but what I did for the calculations the tops are welded together. It's got a little piece of conduit, a one inch ring, one inch coupler for conduit in the top that the three quarter inch goes through. Other than that, the top is welded together. The bottom has a three foot piece. Each side is three feet right here. So to get the next measurement, I went halfway. Halfway is right here. Well, if you have a three foot bar down there and nothing up there, this is going to be a foot and a half because it's halfway. Your next measurement is going to be split this distance with the bottom or with the top. 
since you're gonna split the distance, say you're gonna go with the bottom next, this is a foot and a half, that's three feet. What's half of that, <clears throat> or the half that difference? So three feet and a foot and a half, you have a foot and a half difference. You split that foot and a half difference, now you get a, it's a foot and a half, 18 inches, you get nine inches. So you add nine inches to a foot and a half, 27 inches. You come halfway down, this one's 27 inches. You want the next one in the middle, you just do the same thing. You come exactly halfway and you take the average of that bar and this bar and you get the length of this bar. It's not rocket science if you do it that way, it's pretty simple math. Uh, the diagonals were a little bit harder, more time consuming with the diagonals. Since I already had all these triangles in, I cross measured each opening. So I went diagonally here, diagonally here, on all three sides. And then I took the average of that and I cut the diagonals that average length and I placed them in here. If it was a little snug, I tried to trim a little bit off. I didn't want anything to be super snug. I wanted everything to kind of flow, but taking the average of all three sides, all the diagonals and cutting the diagonals worked out fairly well. I stopped the diagonals, was this halfway up? I stopped the diagonals. The top is pretty small. It doesn't, I don't, I don't think it's gonna need diagonals for extra support way up top. If the top wavers a little bit, it's probably better for it anyways. The price of this project, I don't know how much EMT conduit varies from location to location, but this is half inch EMT conduit. It's the cheap stuff you get at your home store. I think there's 20 sticks a half inch and four sticks of three quarter inch. And then what, three of these one inch couplers, so your three quarter inch can spin so you can adjust the angle of your cell booster. You can turn it around from the bottom. You don't have to set it and then tilt it upright and hope it's pointing the right direction. Uh, I think the conduit is four bucks a stick. The concrete was like 485 a bag and there's 13 bags in this pour. So not a whole lot of cost in this build. You do have the conduit if you wanna run the conduit over underground or you can just run your uh, coax cable down the tower and over to your roof. Depends on how you wanna do it. I wouldn't think that there was more than $200 in this build and that does not include the cell booster. I don't remember how much we paid for our cell booster we have a Wii Boost. I think it's a middle of the line cell booster. Seems to work all right, and we're just gonna use it on top of this tower. The wonderful thing about this tower, the way it bolts on, so I can pivot it down. If something goes wrong with my cell booster on top, I can just take one bolt all the way out, two bolts loose, tilt it back down, swap out to a new cell booster, and tilt it back up into place. I don't have to worry about taking the whole thing down or falling down as I'm trying to take it down. That's why I made the base the way I did, so that it would tilt up and down. I'm not gonna tilt this up right now. I want this concrete to cure really good. It still looks a little green to me, and I don't wanna put any wind force. It's supposed to get kinda of windy this afternoon. I don't wanna put that wind on the concrete. Um, it's probably fine to tilt it up right now. It's been about 16 to 18 hours, and I can't imagine that this cell tower cell booster tower is going to put a lot of force even if it does get windy. We have a lot of trees to block the wind, but I'd rather not. I have a chance to wait, so I'm gonna wait before I tilt this thing up into place. I've also gotta bolt the cell booster to the top of it and hook that coax cable up to it. But maybe tomorrow we'll get this thing tilted up and see how good a cell signal we can get. Until next time guys, go make something.